so uh, this is how the box will look once you order it from Amazon uh, it's made I don't know what is this 2002 is it made in 2002 I'm not sure uh, it's a very old product but it doesn't look like that old and this is the part number it's made by an Indian company called Selec uh, energy meter and uh, inside it you will see the meter like this and also let's take out the meter yes so out of the box um, it looks pretty neat it has a uh, DIN mounting so it will fit directly into your panel and also it has this RS485 which shows here and some pulse output and the phase in neutral input and output mm -hmm. mm, okay and it also has one inner, uh, one user manual uh, we'll check what is inside that <laughs> yes so um, silica gel inside and it has two pulse leds uh, one kind of reset or some button and one enter button and it's 230 volts 0.52 uh, 10 amps or 100 amps maybe there is a continuous and peak rating it is a hologram here which says tested okay and it's made in India it's made in India so it's not made in China that's another reason to purchase this meter so it's made in India uh, well, so uh, this is the user manual. Uh, it has uh, the list of uh, key press, the different screens that you see. It also has the Modbus uh, registers and the various values that you want to read. You can use these register values mm, and the connection for RS485 because Modbus is working on RS485 here the connection to the panel made in India and this is the front side it also has uh, I think it has almost all the functions which are mentioned here not like a made in China where half of the things are in Mandarin or things are not very clear or uh, you know incredibly difficult to translate uh, some of the English language because they themselves are translated from uh, some of the uh, Chinese uh, meaning so it's made in India, uh, it has proper manual, it has Modbus protocol, the registers are mentioned, looks pretty decent. So um, overall it looks good once I open it from the box. So so once we lift this, uh, this top uh, cover, we see that it has different screws and there is a uh, meaning to each of the screw and that is mentioned here. So what is the meaning of each of the screw? So when you put it in the back side. So I think that's the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, and three. And here is one, two, and three. So pretty neat. There is no confusion. Um, so the top are all hopefully isolated. Let me do a test with, uh, with proving uh, with multimeter and continuity test. So uh, RS-485 is the most uh, commonly um, uh, connection that I'll make with it. So let's check a resistance, uh, check the resistance between any of this live and neutral and the RS-485 terminal. So as you can see, uh, the resistance is incredibly high. There is no, no point in, uh, in checking for the continuity. The resistance itself is very high. Let's check with the other with respect to neutral yes so this is with respect to neutral again the resistance is in meg ohms and so it's almost totally isolated from the uh, the live and the neutral all right so uh, let's power it on so i have connected the one and the three that is the live and the neutral one and the three and uh, let's just power it on and see what display comes up so power on and and it has okay it shows kilowatt hour which is zero sigma maybe the overall value 
pulse there is no pulse because there is no load connected um, so the the next screen let's just go to the next screen what does it show voltage current power factor frequency maximum demand reactive power overall power this is the active energy okay so it has this button you have to press to know everything i am not interested really in operating this button i am more interested in uh, doing the rs485 communication over modbus and let's see if you can retrieve these values by using this uh, the registers mentioned here so uh, let's uh, try the modbus now and for modbus uh, we will try reading the voltage which is 0x15 register and uh, that is equal to 21 in decimal and also the frequency 1b which is uh, 27 in decimal <clears throat> and we are in India um, so this frequency would be close to 50 Hertz and the voltage would be close to between 230 to 240 volts so let's check so uh, for Modbus um, it uses the physical layer of RS485 so I am using this USB to RS485 converter. You can see there is a Max 485 chip on this, and a bunch of diodes and uh, the resistor. And well, nothing special about this. And it has this A and B connection, which is given to this energy meter. And the energy meter is already powered. As of now, it's showing like zero kilowatt hour. <clears throat> and the connection is like uh, from A. I have given to the A is the orange wire. Uh, you can see the A, uh, which is the RS485 signal. A and B uh, goes to uh, the positive and then the negative, which is the pin number four and five of the uh, of the meter. So uh, for Modbus uh, protocol, uh, it's it's not very complicated. It's a serial protocol and working at a default value of nine six double zero. And this 9600 is also mentioned here. The baud rate, and the default baud rate is 9600. You can also also change it to 19200, but I'm just keeping it to 9600, the, the default value. Now, uh, coming to the protocol itself, it ha you have to send the number 01, which is the address of the energy meter. The function, which is 04, uh, typically that's what uh, is used for most of the uh, energy meters. Now this one is not really, uh, this document that I'm showing is not really from uh, Selec, but it's from another similar kind of energy meter which is from this company called as the Astron. They manufacture similar kind of meter. And uh, it also uses Modbus RTU protocol. So I just, I'm using the same um, um, protocol format, so 0104 and uh, low and high address instead of sending 0, 0 in our case the voltage is 0 and uh, 0 x 1 5 which is 21 so 0 and 21 and we want to read uh, two bytes so it is 0 and 0 2 and finally the checksum so the checksum uh, it's a crc 16 bit calculation so for that i have a small script which generates this. so this is the script you can take it from any uh, any website so this is the website and you take it from there and you, it generates the uh, CRC uh, code okay, for the value which is, in our case it is. <clears throat> so I am generating bunch of other CRC so you ignore uh, the result only take the first one. So this is only for my testing so forget about it. So this is the string that we will be sending 0402102. Okay.
So after generating the CRC, after running the script, this is the CRC that I get. That is 0F and 60. Now, if you refer uh, to the Modbus protocol, uh, we have to send the CRC, uh, the low byte first, and then the uh, high byte. So we will just swap this 0F and 60 that we got here. Mm, the 0F and 60 will send the 60 first, and then the 0F. And converting it to the decimal, uh, we get something like this is the mm, string that we get. So I'm using a, a real term, which is just a terminal uh, program, uh, nothing great in that you can use anything. Uh, I have selected the port number uh, where this USB connection is, uh, USB, uh, USB to max 232 is connected. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm doing is I'm setting the baud rate to 9600 and then sending the string which is 0 uh, sorry 1 comma 4 uh, comma uh, 0 comma 21 and this the last is the CRC 0F and uh, 60 so where 60 is sent first and the 0F is sent next so now if we send this uh, we should send in number format not the SK format send number format this is the reply that we get from the uh, from this device so in this case uh, the uh, the useful data it has bunch of crc and other things the useful data is only from here that is uh, 43.7a0000 so we'll take this 43.7a0000 so this is the ieee 754 format so we have to take this 32 bit number 4 bytes and plug into uh, the ieee 7 so it will generate a, a, IEEE, a floating point number so for now uh, we are not really bothered about how to generate the floating point number from this we will use a website so as you can see i have plugged in this so it is ieee floating point conversion so i have set this 437a0000 and compute it gives us a voltage of 250 volts which could be correct mm, let's check yeah and it's close to 250 volts um, it's in fact sometime back it was showing 250 uh, so it keeps on changing uh, every second so really uh, not i'm not really that concerned about the about the uh, accuracy so uh, let's check one more uh, the the mains frequency which is uh, 1 comma 4 comma 0 and the register value is 27 and i have pre-calculated the checksum it will be 1 uh, sorry 204 comma 1 so uh, clear and let's send this number and the reply you get is 42 and 47 so 42 and 47 0, 0, 0, 0. so let's plug it here 42 47 0, 0, 0, 0. So 42, 47, uh, 0, 0, and 0, 0. <clears throat> so let's compute. And it shows the frequency of 49.75. Okay. So uh, it's working fine. So Modbus is also working. So um, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to run a, a small script and it will be able to. Uh, read all the data uh, of the meter from the Modbus. Okay, so uh, I have created a, a small uh, script in Python and it basically communicates uh, over serial port and you can see the, uh, the code here which is for serial and then it has <coughs> uh, it is sending the uh, the register address and also the number of bytes to be read so uh, basically is the same thing uh, what we had uh, sent over the terminal program only thing it is uh, through a script so it's much more easier to uh, convert and do the um, uh, conversion of the hex number to the floating point number so uh, let's run it and see what is the result okay uh, so i'm running it uh, enter and as you can see that it is uh, reading the uh, voltage and the frequency as of now i'm only reading the voltage and the frequency mm, just to be sure that we are reading the values properly Whoa, focus yeah so it is reading the number uh, voltage and the frequency 
and whenever it reads the voltage and when there is whenever there is a communication it also displays one um, one sign here yeah you observe uh, i think it will come any time now uh, yes so once and that sign means uh, this communication is in progress so uh, overall it's working fine mm, i think there is no issue um, and if we um, put the script as of now i'm running it from my windows uh, laptop but if we move it move the script uh, since it's written in python we can easily move it to a raspberry pi and let it run from raspberry pi and integrate some um, mqtt stuff and then we should be able to uh push this number uh over the internet and i can observe the energy consumption in my house from anywhere all right so uh, i have uh, created a few scripts in python uh, basically to <coughs> to uh, interface with this uh, energy meter and also uh, push the data uh, using mqtt on uh, thingspec so uh, let me show you the scripts uh, uh, so uh, this is one of the script uh, which generates the uh, crc for the uh, modbus protocol uh, so it basically does some calculation and generate a 16 bit crc which is needed to be sent for the modbus uh, the next one is the interface uh, functions for the energy meter the select em2m Mm, so it has the different value of registers uh, slave address and if you go down uh, you can see that it interfaces it switches on the or it uh, opens the serial port mm, and if it is true then it sends the command uh, the same command which we had earlier uh, sent it via the uh, terminal uh, program but only in this case we are doing it uh, through the script so it makes much more easier for us and once the script is say, once the uh, command is sent um, the energy meter it it replay it replies back with the with the uh, data uh, in this case we are reading the voltage so this is for reading the voltage there is other one also which is for reading the uh, frequency um, so the same thing is here for reading the frequency uh, later on we can add as many number of uh, parameters that we want to read but for now for testing purpose I am just reading the voltage and the frequency. Now uh, the third one is something that I am not really an expert but uh, I figured out from this YouTube uh, video and you can use this PAHO link um, sorry PAHO uh, library and using that you can Mm, push data onto the things pick by using mqtt okay so i'm not going into the details of it you can go through the documentation uh, of PAHO, how to use it but for now i'll show you the demo so uh, this is the things pick um, uh, website and i have two uh, fields which are set one is the voltage and another is the frequency and as of now i've cleared the data so there is no data and let us run the uh, run the uh, script so for uh, running the script i have already uh, gone to that folder name and just run this <coughs> and as in when the data is available as you can see one data has already come mm. And if we wait for 30 seconds, one more data will come. So the let's check what is the data. So it is 249 and it is 49.75. So this is uh, 249 is here and this is uh, 49.75. Yes, so uh, the values are correctly uh, transmitted. This is the second one. Second data is also sent. Um, so the second data is 249 and this is 50 hertz. So this is again 249, but this uh, frequency is now 50 hertz. So it's um, it's transmitting properly, <coughs> mm, and uh, um, 
Yeah. So if we wait for longer, we will have more data which will be already uh, published. So that's the correct technical word, uh, publish in MQTT. And since it is MQTT, uh, we can also subscribe uh, to this broker, uh, ThingSpeak, and take action uh, through some other means like if I want to uh, put a buzzer or something. So one typical example is that if I am my um, geyser, my water heater, that is what we call in India. So if my geyser is running for a long time, which is the most um, energy consuming equipment in my house. So if it is running for a long time, then I can, uh, I can sound a buzzer and uh, we have to turn it up after let us say 49, after say 15 minutes or so. So uh, that is one application or if I want, I can also send some uh, tweet message saying that your geyser is on. So sometimes what happens is that the geyser is on when um, like we have locked the house and gone outside but uh, to the office, but the geyser is still running. So this actually can give a, an idea about what is the energy consumption happening at home. So as you can see, the parameters are here. And uh, the um, energy meter and the RS-485 to USB converter is here. So once we have this data on IoT, we can do any number of, uh, pos the possibilities are unlimited. Um, and since it is a Python script, uh, we can uh, send this, uh, send this scripts uh, over to uh, a Raspberry Pi. And we can run the same script over there and uh, the exactly same effect will be taking place but now it is on a standalone thing, um, not linked to the PC. Yes, uh, so uh, we have uh, the Raspberry Pi, um, it is, uh, in my case it is uh, booting through this USB pen drive, so there is no SD card <coughs> and I have powering it to this um, power bank, so yeah. So um, let's uh, connect to the uh, to the Raspberry Pi through um, SSH. Yes. So the uh, IP number is uh, this this number. So I already know it, and so it's difficult actually to type and hold the camera in other hand. So just entering, and it is asking for the password. I have the default password only. Okay, so now we have entered uh, to the Raspberry Pi uh, through this SSH um, uh, secure shell. So let us do one thing, let us now uh, transfer the files which are, uh, which are on my laptop um, and that were earlier we had used to uh, send the data to ThingSpeak and now transmit it over to the Mm, transfer it to the Raspberry Pi so that we can run it on Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi will take care of all the all the work. So uh, oh, now what we are doing is that we are doing a secure copy SCP and these three scripts one, one, two and the third one we are putting into the Raspberry Pi under the folder called the project. <coughs> So uh, we are copying it there and if you see this is on my present system, okay. Mm, so uh, let us run this and, um, and it's asking for the password and let me enter the password. All right. So as you can see the three files are copied now from the, from my Windows laptop to the Raspberry Pi. No, uh, this is the uh, secure shell on running on my Raspberry Pi and let's check if the files are really copied there or not. So for that we can just type um, ls and uh, project project and let's check inside. So as you can see the three files are copied there. <coughs> so we can run them uh, straightforward. Uh, so there should not be any change except for one. Uh, the one change is the COM port. So in Windows the serial to USB once you connect to the laptop, it is named as like COM1, COM2. Mm, whereas in, uh, in Linux, it is named differently like the dev, TTY, USB0, USB1. So that part we have to change. So for that, we have to first find what is the name of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the 
comport or uh, I do not know what is the exact name, but the name which is assigned by the um, <coughs> operating system once I connect the uh, Max 230 USB to Max 232 converter to Raspberry Pi. So, let us first connect it. So, uh, one easier way uh, to know the, the number uh, of the COM port assigned uh, in Raspberry Pi is uh, by checking the folder uh, which is the uh, dev folder or the device folder. So, ls dev let us check inside this. So, these are the present uh, devices which are connected some lot of them could be virtual uh, not really a physical device connected. So, what we are looking for is something like a, a TTY USB, uh, I do not see any TTY USB, uh, I do not see anything, um, it should be somewhere here TTY A, TTY USB. So, uh, let us connect the uh, serial to USB converter now and then we will check this device folder again. Uh, well, uh, as you can see uh, this is connected and the LED is glowing. So, I have connected it here and let us check this device folder again and as you can see here is one uh, USB 0 is there, TTY USB 0 is there. Earlier it was not there. Uh, if you see here the print K Mm, so, as you can see there was uh, print k AMA 0 and then UHID was there, but here if you see uh, AMA 0 print k and then USB 0 is there. So, that is the device which is assigned uh, by the operating system the name uh, once we connected our uh, USB to max uh, 485 converter. So, let us use this name TTY, um, so the name should be um, slash dev slash TTY USB 0. So, uh, for uh, changing the COM port name we have to again in the secure, uh, secured shell uh, Raspberry Pi. So, we will um, use the nano, um, nano editor. So, sudo nano and the project and this is the script inside which the, uh, the COM port name is there. So, if we go down. So, this was COM 7 on my Windows laptop. So, we will go here and make it change to uh, slash dev slash USB uh, TTY USB 0. Uh, well, so uh, this is changed now and let us save and we will exit from this uh, from this script. So, uh, now we are all set and let us run this script and as you can see this uh, windows in the thing speak is also I have shown here. This is the command prompt. Uh, which is the um, the sh uh, secured shell running from the Raspberry Pi. So, let us run this uh, Python script on Raspberry Pi and yes and as you can see it is captured the data of 250 volts and 49.75. Uh, the same thing has appeared here 250 volts and 49.75 you can see it from here 49.75 so uh, yeah so uh, it is running fine and as you can see this is the fourth data or the count is 0 to 3 so the four data has also come here so as of now the voltage is pretty much consistent at 50 volts and frequency is 49.75 hertz so this is fine and it is running from this raspberry pi uh, which is power from this uh, power bank and uh, this Raspberry Pi is in turn it is connected to this meter and so this system is entirely portable and it can be mounted on my uh, my um, energy meter uh, sorry on my switch distribution box in my house and and I can get all the data uploaded on the internet and take suitable action accordingly.